troubled times blight England since King Richard the Lionheart was captured in the Crusades. Meanwhile, Robin of Loxley is stealing from the rich lords to free the king. Thank you for joining me today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. Robin of Luxley is a two-player competitive set collection game that plays in about 30 minutes. It's designed by Uwe Rosenberg and it's published by Rio Grande Games and they sent us this copy to review. You'll set up the main game area with randomly placed out loot tiles and then fame tiles on the outside. The start player chooses one corner and the other player starts in the opposite corner, each taking their loot tile and turning it into a coin. Here's a quick overview of the game. Players are going to be moving their knight tokens around the board, collecting loot tiles, eventually trading in those loot tiles for gold, and they're going to be moving their bard around the outside of the board, completing objectives. The first person to have their bard complete two laps first is the winner. On your turn, you move your horse as you would a knight token in chess. Two tiles, and then one, or one, and then two, gaining the loot token you land on. During your turn, you can trade in your loot tokens for gold, but you have to have at least three of a kind, discarding two of them and then keeping the rest as gold. Also, on your turn, you're trying to complete as many objectives as you can in order around the outside of the board. You do this by seeing what is required and then checking to see if you meet those requirements. So you could go a number of spaces in a row if you can, and even if you can't meet the requirement, you're allowed to spend a coin as if you did meet the requirement. Most of these requirements make sense, like you have to have loot of certain colors, certain number of collections, which is basically different color loot, and things like that. But even if you don't understand one, uh, the nice thing is the last few pages of the rule book explain every single tile. The corner tiles are a little larger, but act in the same way. There are day tiles and night tiles, with the night ones being a little harder. You're trying to complete two laps around the board first to win the game. Actually, there is one other way of winning, and that is to completely lap your opponent first, which is pretty difficult. Normally, you're just going laps around the board, and the last tile on the second lap is the long live the king tile which you must spend four gold in order to reach that space and win. There's a lot of replayability in the game. Uh, you have the tiles and around the outside, there's objective tiles that you're trying to complete. There's more than you need in a given game, so every game is going to be a little bit different, and also how they're arranged will make it feel different. Then you have the loot tiles in the middle, how they're arranged, and even how they come out during the game will make the game feel different. And even how you decide to move your knight token. As I said earlier, you can move your horse like a knight in chess, but still creates a lot of choices to get what you need. Now there's not a lot of luck or chance in the game. I think most of that would come through the loot tiles and how they're coming out in the game. I remember one turn, I really didn't want any pink tiles to come out because I was trying to complete objectives that would uh, let me progress if no pink tiles came out based on what I had. And I was lucky enough and no pink tiles came out. Well, Melissa was nearby, but she didn't want any red tiles, want any red loot tiles to come out. Well, I think it was turn after turn, red tiles kept coming out. So I think that's maybe a little bit where the chance or luck would come in the game. Also, there was one turn where I sort of blocked Melissa purely by accident. She was in the corner and I moved to this spot, meaning on her turn, she really only had one legal spot she could go since you aren't allowed to go in the same spot as an opponent. So I found looking three, four, five tiles ahead really helps you in the game. And out of those four or five tiles, looking at which one might be really difficult for you to complete or maybe not as easy, and I would pick coin to pass over that objective, 
But if I looked further than that out, it just really didn't help my strategy because I would be so focused on those tiles way in advance that I wasn't focused on the, the one or two tiles and it didn't help me progress as fast as I wanted to in the game. The theme really comes through not only in the different loot tiles, but also in the names of the fame tiles. I personally really like this game. I enjoy games with spatial reasoning, the movement of the knight's cool, and people might be familiar with that with the game of chess. So, you know, you're, you're really understanding how a knight moves because that's the only piece you're moving in this game to get those loot tiles. So that's kind of cool. I like set collecting games and this one's got it. And the game plays in under 30 minutes. I, I appreciate that, that it's not a game that goes too long. So if this sounds like something you would enjoy, then check out Robin of Aloxley from Rio Grande Games. And as always, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel and check out all our other videos and hit the like button on this video. I didn't mention my shirt. Uh, hopefully you got to see that. One of my favorite animated Disney films. And uh, Melissa has a matching shirt with Maid Marian, so that's kind of cool. I just heard they're going to make a, another live action video, so I'm interested in what that's going to be.